Ever since the Renaissance, Italian has been the perfect language for scandalous tales of intrigue. That's right, you do not need many words in Italian to get your point across, but is the Italian language hard to learn? Let's find out. Il libro narra la storia di un nonno e dei suoi due nipotini che entrano nel magico mondo di Interland e vivono delle avventure digitali che ci aiutano a capire come comportarsi nel mondo del web. They say that Italian vocabulary is among the richest on the planet, but why? Well, the Italian language was shaped by Tuscan poets who wanted the language to sound more beautiful, and I think they got their way because Italian is surely meant to enchant you and lure you in. Don't you think there is just one tiny, small little Problema. Considerate che ci mancano 50 giorni alla prova costume. La metto tutti qua che vengo, no? Sabato con le amiche, la domenica con i parenti, qualche matrimonio, qualche battesimo, una crisi, ma tu vedi delle rasmus, venerdì danzante, qualche saga sparsa, alla fine sai quando mi rimane. Yep, grown up speak Italian. Really fast, do you even have a chance of following what's going on? Well, the first way in to Italian is simple. Start with all the words that you already know. That's right, Italian and English have common words going all the way back to the Romans, meaning that if you speak English, well, you already know a lot of Italian. It might sound fast when you hear it, but beneath the surface, you have a lot more of a head start than you might think. Just try reading something simple in Italian and you will quickly see what I mean. Reading something simple like volume two of my short stories for beginners with this gorgeous new cover. Out now. Why is Italian especially good for singing? Well, as the story goes, those ancient poets that I mentioned wanted Italian to be the perfect balance between light and heavy sounds. That's why there are a lot of these. Italian only has seven phonetic vowels. A, E, E, I, O, A, U. That's it. Bella lì, adoro, da urlo, ganzo, figo, e vai. Almost all Italian words end in vowels, and this creates a kind of audible magic, a smooth, melodious sound with vowels kind of hanging and floating in the air. And here is some more music for your ears. The way Italian sounds and the way that you spell it, well, it matches up almost all of the time. La vita è Bella. What you see here is what you get, which is a lot more than you can say for English. So Italian is not only very musical, but it's also very straightforward to pronounce, and you do it all with only 21 letters. It's the same alphabet as English, but without J, K, W, X, and Y. They only use those letters in foreign and borrowed words. You'll see accents on certain letters, yes, but these are great because what accents do is make clear the difference between similar words, or sometimes where the stress goes on a word. Grazie. Grazie. Eh, grazie, 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 with an air sound at the end. You have been warned. But hear how he pronounces every single letter. That's really important in Italian. And the fact is that makes it easy for you. Just say what you see. The only letter you don't pronounce in Italian is H. Burrata. Um, now Italians roll their R's. You knew that, but it is easier than the Spanish R. You see, the Italian rolled R is softer, and you do it all in front of your mouth right here. It's a nice soft rolled R. Now there are a few unfamiliar sounds to get used to in Italian. There is the ñ sound, like gnocchi. It looks like it's going to be hard and weird when you read it, but if you can say canyon or minion, well, you can say ñ. It's exactly like the Spanish ñ. Oh, bella ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao, ciao, ciao. You probably know this word. See the spelling though. It is spelled with a C, but pronounced with a CH. Ciao. In Italian, both C and G have different pronunciations depending on what letter comes after them. Another sound combination that changes depending on what letter comes after it is the SC combination. Scatola. Scena. But the hardest Italian sound to get your mouth around is probably the gli sound. Gli uomini means the men. So it's a common one that feels a little bit like a tongue twister, but you could just avoid talking about men. The difference between a single or double consonant can also be tricky. You have to pronounce these double letters with a stronger sound than the single ones, or people will think you're saying uh, sometimes a completely different word. Italian has quite a lot of these, really easy to say, but also quite easy to forget which is which. So this is just really a memory question and getting used to which is which. And if you think that this video right here is worth remembering, maybe, then click these three buttons right here and YouTube will remember 
remember you next time I have a cool video to share. Everything you can see, hear, touch, taste, or imagine, everything has a gender in Italian, meaning that it's either masculine or feminine. And you need to memorize these, there's no way around it. But there are rules of thumb to help you at the beginning. If the word ends in an A or an E, it's feminine. If it ends in an O or an I, then it is masculine. Again, most of the time. There are some exceptions, like the classic il problema, which looks like it should be feminine because it ends in an A, but it's actually masculine. And problema is a word that you use all the time. Again, just got to remember that. This rule does work 95% of the time though. The fact that every noun comes with a gender that you have to memorize, it tends to scare the bejesus out of people who are new to learning a language. How, how am I ever going to remember all this stuff? What's really important to know about this though, from a lot of experience, is that it does get a lot easier and even quite natural to remember the gender of nouns. At first, you will try to memorize the gender of each noun and you'll drive yourself crazy doing it. But as soon as you start to spend real time with Italian through reading and listening to the language, what you'll find is that words just start to sound right when they're masculine or sound right when they're feminine. You don't need to be able to explain it, it will just be. So the best advice really is to be patient, let these words, these genders take shape in your mind. The harder part is when you actually have to put those words into action. See these patterns here? All the A's, the O's, the E's. In Italian, the articles, nouns, and adjectives all change depending on the gender of the word, meaning that word endings all have to, all gonna have to match up. So how do you do that? Now, articles are words meaning the and a in English. And Italian has seven different versions of the and four different versions of a, which sounds a bit crazy, right? But wait, there's something rather strange about an Italian noun. <laughs> it can never get rid of its shadow. Uh, I mean, its article, ever. Of course, in English, we don't always need articles. We say things like, shadows roam the street at midnight. We don't say the or at say shadows. But in Italian, you have to say, le ombre, the shadows, with le telling you that it is plural. Another thing that affects articles is the first letter of the word that follows them, as you can see again here. Again, it's just to keep that smooth, sultry sound going. This example from earlier is a plural form, and luckily Italian plurals have nice, easy rules. Feminine nouns get an E ending, and masculine nouns get an I ending. Again, there are some exceptions, yes. For example, the word finger in Italian is masculine, but for some reason it becomes feminine in the plural, and no, I have no idea why. The same act of rebellion happens with a bunch of other plural words. Take a look here. But look, a language would not be a language without a bunch of weirdness baked in, would it? And then here comes the preposition onto the scene. Prepositions are words like from, on, under, behind, to, over, above. Italian prepositions are the most complicated of all the Romance languages. You can start off by learning these one for one with the English words, pretty straightforward. But the hard part is that some Italian prepositions mean more than one thing. Take di, for example. Di can mean of, about, from, or even in. So it takes a ton of repetition to get your brain accustomed to what fits where. Prepositions also do this merging thing with the article. From in Italian is da, but in a sentence it merges with the article to make one new single word. And so once again, the matching game is on. You can see all the various combinations right here. There is a very good reason for all these shenanigans though. It just sounds better. And for Italian, sounding good is very, very important. Sorry, I'm getting carried away with the story here, and we are not even at the body language part yet. That's coming up, but you can't blame me. I do like a great story. And in fact, stories are honestly the single best way to get used to seeing all this tricky grammar in a new language, because you just get used to it by seeing the grammar in context. And that's why I created a unique way to learn languages using stories. Now, this method is called story learning, and it teaches you in exactly the same way that you learned your first language as a child, through stories. It's all very natural, very brain friendly. So if you'd like to learn more about learning Italian through the magic of stories, well, open up the description uh, of the video below. You'll see a link to a free story learning kit that I've made for you. Click the link, it'll take you to a page where you can grab the kit. It's completely free. Just click that link below. All Italian verbs start off with one of three endings, ere, are, or ire. And then when you put them into sentences, the endings change depending on who is doing the action and when it happens, past, 
present or future. For example, the verb to love in English has just three forms, love, loving, loved. Italian, to love, amare, has all of these forms and more. It's kind of scary looking, right? But believe it or not, if you look at them on a chart, you will see clear patterns within them. There are also a bunch of irregular verbs too. Of course there are, it is a language after all, but most of the irregular verbs are so common that you'll see them constantly around the place when you spend time with Italian and seeing equals remembering when you do it enough. And again, what happens is after a while, these regular verbs, well, they tend to be the ones that stick in your head precisely because they are so common. So there's nothing particularly unusual here. There's one formidable grammar rule coming up though that will make real Italians admire you if you can get it right. Your fears, your emotions, your opinions, your wishes, these are all what you might call imaginary or hypothetical situations. And they use a special tense called the subjunctive. English rarely uses the subjunctive and it's one of the most difficult tenses in Italian. A handy way just to start getting used to the subjunctive is to simply learn a few set phrases that use the subjunctive off by heart. Like, I think it's fair. I think you're right. Learn a few of these and as your Italian kind of improves around it, you'll start to just naturally notice how you're saying that sentence. Look at the grammar within it and then th ask yourself why that particular verb is using the subjunctive the way it is. And then what will happen is you'll start to notice it being used elsewhere too. Like most grammar, the subjunctive is best absorbed rather than studied as such, which is one of the fundamental principles of the story learning method, by the way. In any event, learning just a few set phrases that use the subjunctive is a really good way to start and will also have the side effect of impressing Italians when you whip them out and everyone likes to impress Italians from time to time. The conditional tenses are also something else that you might find a little bit tricky at first. Most people do. Conditionals are like could or would. So it's very easy to know when to use this tense, but the conjugations can be a little bit tricky. See how many letters get added on to the verb here? It's kind of crazy. I remember having a bit of a chuckle at some of these myself when I first learned Italian, and there is no doubt that conjugating verbs in general is probably the biggest thing that us English speakers have to muddle through when learning a Romance language, especially Italian. There is a bit of memorization involved with these for sure, but honestly, again, the best way to get used to verb conjugations is just spending lots of time with content. You can take a quick look at the rules for this in a grammar book if you want, but then I recommend you put down your grammar books and then like read books of simple stories, read stuff in Italian that shows you these verbs in their natural state, not in a set of rules. In Italy, we don't say, can I have some spaghetti? We say, oh. Absolutely true and completely undeniable. Italians speak with their hands. If you want to give someone un sacco di parole in Italy, well, you have options. The flip of a hand, the flick of a chin, circles in the air. There are lots and lots of gestures and each one of them means something different. I'm pretty sure Italians can convey entire messages without saying a word. I mean, I guess it is one way to make sure you never get your pronunciation wrong. Mind you, you've still got to find that attitude, but I've got a feeling that you've already got it if you've watched this far. So Italian, is it hard to learn or not? Well, the Foreign Service Institute in the US says it will take you only 24 weeks or roughly 480 hours of practice to reach fluency. But what do we think? That says it all. You can do this. You've got this. Italian absolutely is one of the most accessible languages you can learn as an English speaker. And I've got to be honest, it is an absolute blast. In fact, if you want to follow my entire journey learning Italian, you can do that right here because I documented the whole thing over three months. And you can also click over here to download your free story learning kit, which is going to help you learn Italian a lot faster.